What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with a video that's been kind of requested and kind of requested without saying. Uh, this video is going to discuss some myths about red stars. Now, I don't want this to be another video talking about where red stars suck or, you know, fix red stars. That has to happen, right? 100 videos on that topic. We all know. We're not happy with red stars. And if you are happy with red stars, you're not watching this video. Here's, more importantly, here's the ideas that I see uh, people ask me questions about regarding red stars and how they impact their roster. And we're just going to go right th I've noticed three. Uh, the first is that red stars make a character good. Uh, that is not true. <laughs> uh, red stars do not make a character good. A character is good, bad, average, great, terrible, right? And I think we can all think of at least one character that fits in every one of those zones. So, for example, uh, just to throw it out there, Phoenix uh, is a great character, right? Uh, so Red Stars don't make her greater. She's still a great character. She's now a stronger version of a great character. Uh, where getting good Red Stars on her will make her stronger and obviously beneficial, she's already a character that you're going to invest in, that you're, you're going to use, is going to be great. So did they make her better? Stronger. Probably a little bit stronger than any gear at this point would make her. But they don't make her great. She's already great. Uh, on the other side, uh, the worst possible, let's take a quick look at, you know, off the top of my head, Kingpin, um, Merc Lieutenant. <clears throat> Merc Lieutenant is a good, good character, right? Uh, Merc Lieutenant more of a kit character than anything else. So uh, whether he's super duper strong or not, it, it doesn't actually matter how many red stars he has. So <clears throat> I have a six red star Merc Lieutenant. Uh, I will show you my Merc Lieutenant. He is level 60, uh, gear tier 10, 664. This is uh, as high as he ever was. This is as high as he's ever going to get. Uh, the fact that he's 46,000 points has nothing to do with the investment I've done. At no point did I say, hmm, this six red star Merc Lieutenant, this is the guy, right? This is, this is the guy that's going to make a difference in my roster, because he's not. <clears throat> he's a 46k character because he went from an arbitrarily smaller amount of red stars to six red stars. Uh, at any point in time, had I had him at high red stars, it would never have changed my mind. I would never have said, nope, this is the guy. And that's true of uh, a lot of characters. And that's a pretty medium character. If you went to a relatively bad character off the top of my head, I don't know if it's going to be easy to find one. Um, Electra found one. <laughs> No amount of red stars are going to make Electra a good character. It, it, it doesn't exist. She will never be a good character. She may be better than she was uh, prior to having red stars, but that's not the comparison you're making. You can't compare a character to themselves. You have to compare them to who they're facing, where you're using them, and Electra is just overall a pretty bad character. So high red stars on her doesn't make her worth investing in, doesn't change the entire dynamic, uh, doesn't make it so that you should stop what you're doing and work on them. Red stars do not improve a character. That's it. A character is good and red stars make them uh, stronger. Or a character is bad and red stars make them stronger. If they're good or bad, completely independent of red stars. There are a handful of exceptions where uh, it becomes anecdotal in that you have a high red star on a good character and therefore, off the top of my head, Black Bolt, you are stronger than those who don't have high red stars on Black Bolt. And that's fair. There is some level of parity regarding the difference in power. Uh, that said, it, it doesn't make a bad character good. Uh, and I think the most noticeable thing 
that's come up recently is the fact that we get a five red star Ultimus from Dark Dimension 3. Ultimus is a very mediocre character. Like he's pretty middle of the line. You have to build around him. He doesn't really carry anything on his own. So having red stars on him will continue to make him a mediocre character. You still have to build around him. He's not going to go from usable to god tier with red stars. That's just not how it works. So hopefully in this myth being debunked, you understand that just because you happen to get a high red star on Handblade Master, Ravager Bruiser, Cree Oracle, uh, Nobu, Nebula, any of these characters, it doesn't mean that, well, now this is the pillar upon which I must build my church. No, just use them in the same way. As a matter of fact, the fact that you got high red stars on a character that's otherwise pretty bad is great. It means that's one less character you have to invest in uh, in order to place on war defense or uh, to use in a blitz team that's balanced out. Um, ultimately, the good characters are worth investing in regardless of whether they have red stars. And of course, you want good red stars on them, but that's not because red stars are the best. That's because those characters are so good, you want them to be even stronger. And if red stars were farmable and accessible more freely, which they're getting better at, uh, you know, you would choose who you invested in. And some people will say, well, then every roster would look alike. And that's somewhat true. But as of right now, uh, most games end up with uh, every roster looking very similarly and skill being the difference maker, not just arbitrary power. So that's the first myth. Uh, red stars don't make a character good. They don't make a character bad. The character stays where they are. They just become a stronger version of that tier. Uh, the second uh, most common myth I see is that red stars are required for endgame content. Uh, I'm going to have to be very careful on how I say this because I already see the comments. There is no endgame content that requires red stars. Uh, that said, there is quite a bit of endgame content that is very poorly designed. <laughs> uh, it's balanced around a system that many players can't attain uh, the level of growth, let alone gear tier 14. Probably some amount of ISO 8s went into the uh, idea when you think about things like U7, uh, and even to some extent, the Greek raids, um, war. It, the content is not designed for Red Stars because it would be very poor design if you chose to balance end game content around a system that players had no control over growth regardless of free to play or spending uh that said uh, i can tell you some anecdotal evidence now i had a very low star and red star minerva clearing dark dimension 2 uh she would have been way better had she been more survivable uh, with stars and red stars uh, there are some characters in U7 that I have at very low red star. For example, Yo-Yo, whom had she got more red stars, she might be, again, more survivable, might do it a little bit more damage. Uh, and again, that's kind of part and parcel with growing in any game. Uh, it's the same as, well, my gear tier 10 character isn't doing it, so maybe my gear tier 11 character is doing it. Uh, red stars help. To say they're required is is also conceding the fact that the end game design uh, is very poor. So if you want to concede that red stars are necessary to the point where there's no way you can do certain end game content without having red stars, uh, you're also saying that the content uh, that we're getting is incredibly poorly designed. They're, they go hand in hand. That said, I don't uh, believe that it's unreasonable to imagine good characters without red stars, as we just talked about, having a difficult time. A lot of the endgame content is strategy-based, and you'll see teams like U7's Tech Wing, where red stars are relatively important, but ultimately, it's the skill and what you can accomplish with the team that's going to carry away. Red stars are just going to make it a little bit easier. If you go back to when the BKT was popular in U6, you can remember that about 100 and 130k 
uh, BKT, best Cree team, Guardian Nerva, whatever, uh, was definitely uh, amazing in U7. And then by the time you got it to about 150 to 180K, uh, you could click auto fight. And that's kind of what red stars mean. Your characters are stronger. Their stats are higher. They are better. So they are going to be better at this content. Until red stars become permanently farmable, until you can target specific characters, the idea that red stars are required for endgame content is more of a weight that's trying to hold people back and incentivize them to spend more money on more lucky shots at red stars than it is to speak the truth, which is uh, investing in the right characters or good characters or just good teams is still going to be beneficial to you in the long run and hopefully uh, you can either get the red stars you need through rng or you can eventually farm them uh, the last myth about red stars that i want to address is that you should lean into your high red stars this is kind of a little bit of a and a little bit of b right uh, i can tell you that again red stars don't make a bad character good they don't make a good character great, and they don't make a great character perfect. They just move up what they're capable of doing. Red Stars are a uh, extension of the character's stats, the same way that gear, the same way that level can be, etc. So if you end up with a very high Red Star on a character that you just don't have access to, for example, uh, I have a four Red Star on a Karnak. Now... Some people may say, well, I got four red stars on Karnak. I got six red stars on Blob. Somewhere is my Toad, and he's got five out of four. Can't wait to find him. There he is. I got a five red star Toad. I don't have a choice. I have to get that character to five red star. Um, I, I support your decision to do so, but no, you don't. Obviously, you want your characters to be as strong as they are, but... You don't have to go out of your way to match the red stars on the character. There are a handful of characters that make up for it, and we already mentioned a couple, like Captain Marvel, Black Bolt, Phoenix is pretty good with red stars. Not necessary, but pretty good. Rocket gets really good with red stars. You know, there's there's a good deal of characters that benefit from red stars a little bit more than others. You know, I'm not looking at Kingpin, but I'm looking at you, Kingpin. You don't have to build your entire roster based on what your highest red stars are. If you get a high red star pull on a character that otherwise, I'm just looking at Wasp, maybe Korath, uh, Deadpool, you wouldn't necessarily use, leaning into that character is going to be an opportunity cost. You are choosing to invest in a character that you otherwise wouldn't, that wouldn't otherwise progress your roster in order to, to show off a really big number, I guess. Um, and... Unfortunately, that's that's the reality. A lot of, I know a lot of people who have. I know a lot of people who ended up with a very high red star on Shield Trooper and thought, well, let's go bring him into Dark Dimension 2, Dark Dimension 3. How's that working out for you? You know, like, not a good character. Doesn't matter how many red stars he has. He's adequate character at best. Um, same kind of thing with Cyclops. Well, I pulled six red star on Cyclops, so now I have to spend the money to unlock him. Well, I, I don't, I'm not saying you're wrong. Like, Spend your money, enjoy your character, but you don't have to spend that money. You'll get him eventually. The red stars bridged a huge gap for you. The red stars are, are great stat boosts. Basically, my Cyclops is 4-4, right? And he got to 38k at gear tier 11. No extra investment. So you really don't want to lean into your red stars per se. You want to use your red stars as if that were just kind of a random boost you got to a character, especially when it comes to like balancing a roster for Blitz or, I don't know, balancing out a really good war team. Sometimes having one really strong character on a war team might be enough, like the Asgardians with a really strong Sif or uh, the Hydra team with a really strong Hydra Armored Guard. You know, Th those characters make sense and you can make use of them, but leaning into them really that's kind of a trap that's going to end up with you being a little bit low on resources in your not resource management game and you're probably going to regret a little bit of it um, so hopefully i was able to address some of the common misconceptions that said red stars are like 
a lottery system and you should feel good when you pull a high number of them on a character. I just want you to be a little bit more critical in your decision making regarding when to invest in the character, how to invest in the character and what they're going to mean for your roster and what you can accomplish. Because this game is not about who has the strongest character. It's about what you can do with them. And if I had a seven red star Yondu, great. I'd have one character I can put on war defense. That's it. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, feel free to uh, comment below. Let me know any good, bad, or really ugly red stars you guys have gotten. And uh, I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.